going on, you guys? It's your boy, Alex West Collects here, bringing you another figure review. And today we are taking a look at the WWE Mattel Elite Series 1 of the Greatest Hits Collection, which is now shipping from ringsidecollectibles.com. It's so always use promo code for life. It will save you 10% off your order. Uh, so today we are taking a look at The Undertaker and Rey Mysterio, the Greatest Hits line. So again, this is something new that Mattel is kind of testing the waters with. Trying to give collectors a chance who missed out on some maybe rare figures or highly sought after figures uh, to get another shot of having them in your collection. And, you know, I, I'm i with you guys, you older collectors who've had the original versions. I think this was like Elite 27, Elite 24, very early on, this Rey Mysterio. Um, and, you know, for you guys who've hung on to it and maybe the price has gone up, you're like, wow, well, here we go. We got a better version of it. It's going to be plussed up with all the, the new technology and this, that, and the other. And let's be honest, all these figures are so old. They didn't even have the interchangeable hand uh, feature that a lot of these Mattels have. Pretty much every Mattel figure that we get comes with a set of interchangeable hands. So this will be interesting. That will be kind of the only new um, kind of feature to it. But looking at The Undertaker and Rey Mysterio in the packaging, you get the beautiful images on the front. I will say this Taker, when it was originally released, I want to say, Jesus, I can't even remember the series. Was it Elite 8? I think it was Elite Series 8. He had that ugly ass screaming scan, which I hated. I had this figure and it's funny. I actually swapped it on with this same head. I think it was the Elite Series 1. Um, and when they re-released this figure, it's like, well, they got rid of that ugly scan. Because I think, I don't know if anyone really liked it. It just, it had, <laughs> just did not look like him. Um, so that is one thing to point out. This Undertaker actually has a different head scan from the original release. Um, Rey Mysterio looks great in the packaging. You can see the extra interchangeable hands he does come with. A very toyetic version of Rey. But again, on the packaging, you do see the Greatest Hits logos all over on the sides, as well as the nameplates here. Flipping over to the other side, the images of Taker and Rey. Again, the Greatest Hits decal on the bottom here looks great. On the back, you get the beautiful large images of each superstar. The other figures in the wave, as well as the read-up. Let's come back and get both these guys out of the packaging. So first, we're taking a look at Rey Mysterio Jr. And this is based on his Elite 24 figure that came out way back when. And I'll be honest, I was never the biggest fan of this figure. I'm kind of surprised that it's in this Greatest Hits wave. I mean, maybe I'm missing the boat. Maybe you guys can let me know down in the comments below if this is one that you missed out on. But I remember this being a peg warmer at my local Walmart for the longest. And I guess we could say that for a few of these Greatest Hits figures, especially uh, even Bam Bam. That was one that I remember seeing on pegs. But... Again, never the biggest fan of this look. I don't I don't know. Maybe, again, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comments. But the accessories he does come with are a set of fisted hands. And you can see the nice skeleton fingers going on the back. Nice design. He does also come with a set of open hands. So remember, when this figure came out in Elite 24, there was no interchangeable hands. I think he had a mic holding hand and a fisted hand. Now you get not only the two fisted hands, but you do also get these nice big gloved hands that have come on the most recent uh, Elite Rey Mysterio figures. Same pattern, but he does have the skeleton uh, design on the back. I really do like that. I feel like that definitely does add something to the figure. And again, the thing that the staple that comes with every freaking Rey Mysterio Elite, this flap shirt. Uh, you can see the design on there. I, you, if you guys have been watching my video reviews for the longest, I hate these flap shirts on Ray, but uh, that is what it is. And I guess I just never really liked this mask. It always just looked a little weird to me. But you can see the nice white and black uh, going through it, the nice sculpting on the side here. Uh, the straps going on the back as well. And this one, I just want to point out, it does have a really loose torso. Um, and I feel like some of uh, my Elite Rays in the past have had the same issues. It's just wanted to point that out you get the nice white design going down the front here a little bit of the orange on the side more details on the back same on the pants you got ray on the side here you got 619 beautiful orange it really does pop uh he does come with the double jointed pinless elbows i don't know if you guys can see that uh, underneath but it is on the figure itself uh the head does have um some great articulation to it as well and it does have the interchangeable head feature so if you guys did want to pop the head off uh, just like the current modern day elites, these greatest hit figures, um, do have the same features as well. But again, one quick look through this ray again, nice details, but again, just personally, not my favorite. And for your elite ray Mysterio comparisons, we have the most recent topics here on the left and we have the elite 72 here on the right. Moving on to the undertaker. So again, this is based on elite series eight. As I mentioned prior in the video, this did come with a different head scan. It was more of a, a screaming scan, and 
I don't know if a lot of us were really a fan of that head skin, so I'm glad they actually changed it on this figure. Um, this looks to be based on the Elite One. It does seem to have the TrueFX technology, and we'll take a closer look at it as we go on through this video. As far as the accessories go, so you do get a set of interchangeable mic-holding hands. He does come with more of the open gesturing hands on the figure itself. I will say this is a missed opportunity, so obviously the Elite Eight didn't have the interchangeable hand uh, capabilities. This would have been a great feature to have either the the thumb where he's doing the, the thing across his neck with the open hand that came with the ultimate edition so if you do have that is something to plug and play there or just some gesturing hands of him kind of like opening his hands as he's coming up on the uh, ring steps or you know calling to the crowd uh where he does an iconic undertaker pose it's a little bit of a missed opportunity if you ask me they could have got a little more creative with the hands because i don't think that would have cost any any more within the budget he also does come with this nice black rope. So one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, the Elite 8 figure did have some silver designs on the cloak itself. This is just all painted in black. If you look around, there's no details to it. It um, does have some nice sculpts here, but as far as uh, the outlines here on the, the buckles in the front, they are just plain black. And if you guys want to get a quick close-up of the head, not my personal favorite Taker scan, but I do like it. It's, it's not bad, but... Um, Nothing crazy about it. Again, it just it screams outdated. And I feel like if they are going to go the extra mile and, you know, use a different head, why not give us the one from the old edition with the tongue out? I feel like that's perfect. That's for this era. They included that uh, with a 98 Undertaker. And I know a lot of us are saying he never really did that tongue out pose where he, you know, the, the slit of the throat. But um, that was something that I feel like could have been included. Or maybe if they really wanted to plus up, just like The Rock, I feel like... Um, that figure really could have benefited from an ultimate mission. And I'm, this is where I'm saying I'm a little confused by the formula. Like the, the set we got here was really a bunch of random figures. They, there's no rhyme or reason why they picked any of them, in my opinion. Um, some of them are going for a lot in the secondary market, but there are definitely figures out there that are going for a lot more that they could have went with. Um, so I'm just trying to get a better understanding of how they pick the set and why they're making the decisions they do. Um, but enough on that tangent. Let's get back to the figure. Uh, so this vest or robe, cloak, whatever you want to call it, does open up on the front here. Just kind of ports in that one hole. I remember this being a pain in the ass too. See, I, this brings back memories of frustrations of elites. I feel like the, the technology has gotten so much better. Uh, this kind of actually ports in pretty easy. Thank God. I remember, Like I said, I remember having this and it just, whew, what a pain. But so with these newer figures, you can pop the heads off. So I will recommend doing that probably make it a little easier because his hair is going to get uh, kind of caught on the robe but you can remove this right off the figure and again it's just some plain black details and th these heavy rubber coats i mean i never really did mind them as long as i had some arm articulation that was able to go through but like anything like a bret hart jacket i absolutely despise or the Undertaker jackets with the sleeves, rubber coats. Don't ever bring them back again, please, Mattel. I don't ever want to see them. They're just, oh, bad memories for sure. Uh, but let's pop his head back on. And that just looks really clean. I do really like how this head looks. So, again, I did have this figure. I actually recently just sold it on online um, because this version was coming out and I wanted the double joint elbow feature and all that goodies. I actually put the same head on there. So it's funny that they, they went with that. And it just looks clean. Looks perfect for the era, if you ask me. Um, decent likeness to the Taker. Uh, I do like the actual head scan, the TrueFX technology. Uh, it does look pretty good. You can see the tats. Details we've gone before. More so on the other side. Got the red on the forearm. Got some more nice coloration there, too. Uh, plain black singlet. Again, we've seen plenty of these Takers before. The red does really pop on the sides here. Unfortunately, does he have the painted torso? I'm going to say he does. Looks like it's painted. I don't, I don't want to scratch with it or scrape it up here. But I did want to swap the head out while we're here. Let's get this head out. And again, not a bad scan. Not knocking it, but look at this. If you have the scan from the Ultimate Edition, tell me that's not perfect for this era taker. To me, that really does complete the look. And for your Undertaker comparison, so on the left, we have the Ultimate Edition, which is probably still my favorite. And we have a current modern day looking Elite Undertaker versus the newest Greatest Hits.
Before we wrap up here with some final thoughts, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. For you guys new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have enjoyed and will subscribe and stick around for more reviews coming up down the road. As far as these two figures go, I'll be honest, Rey Mysterio, I don't know why he's in the set. I don't feel like this was a really sought after figure. I don't think it's a really sought after figure today. Um, I just, I don't really understand the formula here. Again, not not to knock Ray, but I just feel like we get so many of him and I feel like there are some other really highly sought after elites that could have had this spot. So not my favorite to say the least. As far as the Undertaker goes, I did go ahead and complete him by throwing on some elbow pads. I feel like this figure is good. Uh, I feel like this era of uh, The Undertaker doesn't get a lot of love, uh, especially with his, his battles with Shawn Michaels later in his career. Uh, but I really do like how this figure looks. I like the updated facial technology. But I'm trying, like I said before, I'm trying to understand the formula of these greatest hits figures. Are we just going to strictly, strictly re-release them uh, with double joint elbows, interchangeable hands, and true effects uh, facial technology? Or are we going to find ways to release older figures and plus them up? To me, this Undertaker really would have benefited from this tongue out head scan from the Ultimate Edition with the attire and everything that he is, uh, how he came as is. With this being the final video review of the Greatest Hits Elite Wave, I wanted to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite figure from this set. At number six, being my least favorite figure, I'm going to go Rey Mysterio Jr. for the reasons I stated in this video. At number five, I'm going to go with Jake the Snake Roberts. Just not enough meat on the bone. I don't feel like they really added anything to this figure other than the double jointed arms. The head scan doesn't have the true effects, unfortunately. So he's going to be at number five. At number four, I'm going to go the Undertaker. I really do like this figure. I feel like he's just, there's, could have been better ways to plus him up, especially that they picked another head scan. Um, it would have been great to have that no, that tongue out scan that would have been perfect for this figure. At number three, I'm going to go The Rock. I absolutely love this figure. Love the iconic uh, shirt he comes with. Great figure nonetheless. And that's, again, another figure that could have benefited from maybe an Ultimate Edition head scan put in with that figure itself to kind of really take it to the next level. At number two, I'm going to go Rikishi. That's a perfect example of a figure they released and they really plussed it up. Double jointed arms, interchangeable hands, and the true FX technology. Look at that head scan, just so spot on. Number one, the winner of the set, Bam Bam Bigelow, without a doubt. He just looks great. Uh, the attire really pops. Again, double jointed elbows as well. Uh, face, true FX facial technology added to the Legends 5 figure. My favorite figure from the set. And overall, not a bad attempt for Mattel for their, their first wave of this. I really want to see them give us some more must-have figures. Because I'll be honest... There aren't too many must-haves here. It's just kind of a, a random mishmash, if you ask me. I really want to see them make the effort to give us figures that uh, a lot of guys did miss out on, like maybe a Defining Moments of Bret Hart or something of that nature. To me, that would really uh, get me excited for this line instead of just getting a bunch of figures that are redone up. But anyways, these, this whole wave is now shipping from ringsidecollectibles.com. As always, use promo code for life. It'll save you 10% off your order. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video review, and I will catch you all on the next one.